Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. How are you guys doing? Have you unlocked any Doom Tower Champion at all yet? Well, there's only two that you're able to unlock. Archmage Helmet and Thea the Tomb Angel. Let me tell you at the top of this video that I will say Archmage Helmet, so much better than Thea the Tomb Angel as presently constituted. At least that is my opinion. Go ahead and check out my Archmage Helmet uh, video where you unlock him from normal difficulty. So intuitively, you would think that uh, Thea the Tomb Angel from hard difficulty would be a lot, you know, better of a champion. Uh, these champions, you can't even pull from shards. You have to get them from secret rooms only in Doom Tower. To me, ought to be some of the best, most special champions in the game. Sadly, this this is not the case, at least, again, in the opinion of yours truly with Day of the Tomb Angel. Today, I'm going to show you why we're going to highlight this champion. So let's go ahead and take a look at her here. So Day of the Tomb Angel, Force Affinity Knight Revenant Champion. First of all, absolutely stunning in terms of the visuals, the aesthetics on this champion. Uh, yeah, she's just tremendous. Absolutely love uh, the look and feel of this champion. So uh, in terms of skills... On the A1, she attacks two times at random, has a 100% chance when booked to placing a hex debuff for five turns. Debuff cannot be resisted. Each critical hit decreases the cooldown of not of this world skill by one turn. Not of this world plays a perfect veil buff on this champion for three turns and then grants an extra turn, which is really good. And again, you're getting that reduction off of the A1. Now, what is Hex? She's the only champion in the game with Hex. And we saw Hex Reaper and we thought to ourselves, whoa, stacks up to 300% extra damage on an AoE attack on a five turn cooldown, albeit when I saw a five turn cooldown, I was like, dude, she must hit absolutely incredibly hard because a five turn cooldown, right? Uh, decreases uh, damage increases by 50% for each hex debuff on the enemy team and then removes all hex debuffs from the enemy team after attacking. And again, you get these hexes from the A1. Uh, so her passive, Cruel Angel, has a 50% chance of placing true fear debuffs on all enemies for one turn when an enemy loses 30% or more of their max HP in a single hit. Pretty cool passive. Her passive does require accuracy, which is unfortunate because her A1 does not. This debuff cannot be resisted. Uh, so that's her kit. I mean, looking at it, you think to yourself, okay, she seems like she could be really awesome. We know that her A2 Hex Reaper has the best multipliers in the game considering you have 300% extra damage. That is excluding uh, damage based on enemy max HP abilities, which I will already tell you, uh, you know, off the gate here, are better than this ability, even with a 300% damage against bosses especially. So the reviews on this champion, we don't read a lot into reviews here on the channel, but golly, people really love the good old Thea, huh? <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> I mean, absolutely stunning reviews. We're going to give her Siskel and Ebert, if I'm not dating myself too bad, uh, give her two thumbs down. Masteries on this champion, you have some uh, some options here. I do think that, you know, intuitively, you might want to go support tree. That way you can have an attack banner. Uh, instead of going accuracy on the banner, you get a little bit of extra accuracy from the support tree. However, uh, you know, the hex is already lasting for five turns. You don't need to go in and, and grab, a, a, a you know, a master hexer or something like that. Uh, and it's removed anyway off the A2, so it doesn't make any sense. To me, the obvious choice is going with retribution. 50% chance to counterattack, thus placing more hexes uh, on her A1. You can go really Warmaster or Helm Smasher as well. I think Helm Smasher would be a popular choice in PvP in the arena, but I went for dungeon builds with Flawless Execution just to see how uh, far we can push the limit of her A2. Uh, either way, though, I will tell you, I tried, uh, well, it's not going to be a, I didn't try both, <laughs> excuse me, uh, but I think that if I did, it wouldn't be that dramatic of a difference, except for, again, in the arena, you might expect to see a little bit better number on this Helm Smasher, but either way, I would recommend Helm Smasher or Flawless Execution on your Thea if you decide to build her. Now, if you decide to build her, there is one bit of good news. She doesn't take that many books, right? Six on the A1 does suck, don't get me wrong, but only one book on the A2 and only one book on the A3 and no books on the passive. So that at least is a sigh of relief for players out there, I'm sure. We put her in some really good gear in today's video, again, just to show you guys what you can expect if you push her to her limit damage wise. Now the bad thing about this champion, there's a few bad things, but bad thing number one is her speed is so slow for a legendary. 90 speed, 
Good God, 90 speed on a five turn cooldown. The other bit of bad news is, I'll tell you guys right out the gate here, she's gonna auto, if you have it on auto, she's gonna start with her A2. There's no hexes on the enemies. She's not doing a ton of damage here. So she's gonna auto into the Hex Reaper, thus putting it on a five turn cooldown. She should auto into Naw of this world. Grants an extra turn, then she should go into the A1, start landing her Hex, and then go from there, right? Why would you not auto with an ability that grants an extra turn anyway? Start out by putting a perfect veil on her, right? Uh, very weird there. Anyway, uh, we have crit damage. We have actually Savage and uh, a critical rate sets on her today. We have crit damage on the gauntlets attack on the chest, and we have speed on the boots. And again, critical rate, uh, attack percentage, and uh, crit damage are going to be your priorities, and speed too. And you need a little bit of accuracy for those uh, true fears on her. Is it fear or true fear? True fear on her passive. Uh, we went attack on the banner. We went crit damage on the amulet and we went attack again on the ring looking for those attack percentage sub stats So not the easiest champion in the world to build since you have to get accuracy and crit rate and crit damage and attack percentage and speed because she's so slow but at the end of the day, we built her with 147 on the speed, 5331 on the attack, 218 on the accuracy, 92256 on the crit rate, crit damage. Let's go ahead and try her out. Let's start in the arena here, and you're going to see how awkward she is in the arena. Uh, spoiler, guys, I don't think she's worth. I don't think she's worth building, man. I mean. If you're 100% free to play, first of all, it's going to take you forever because you probably can likely only clear secret room, you know, the first or second secret room on hard anyway. But, you know, in a year when you unlock her, if you're free to play, I guess maybe you build her, but I don't know. She's interesting champion. I don't want to sound so negative on her, but let's go ahead and just take a look here. So in the arena, she never really gets an opportunity to even get the hexes landed because if you have her on a nuke team, they're gonna be dead either way. So I'm gonna show you her A2 without the hex first. So the sky touch goes next, and then we'll decrease attack, decrease defense. Now keep in mind here, we have increased attack on her, and we have decreased defense on all the enemies. So this is her at her very best, uh, you know, aside from having weaken uh, up there on the enemies as well. Uh, but we're gonna go in with the, uh, we can start with the A3 again, Get the veil on her, grant an extra turn. We go into the A2, and she'll pretty much kill everybody here. Without the hexes, she was doing 50 to 70k damage or so. So again, not too bad, right? Not She could be an arena nuker for you guys, even without the hex. But, you know, is she better than, you know, whatever? A another arena nuker? Uh, Trunda, certainly not. Uh, but even the champion like Skullcrown, an epic champion, an epic nuker in the game, is it worth it? I mean, I wonder how much Kale would do against that team if he had increased uh, attack and uh, on Acid Rain and, inc and decreased attack on the enemies. It wouldn't be that far off, probably like 40 to 60k damage, you know? Anyway, let's move on to another team here real quick. Another team that we know will probably beat here. And let's try to get some hexes off against these uh, these guys and see if we can even stay alive long enough, right? Almost like my intuition is that she might be better served as like a weird nuker on a defensive team because she can place that perfect veil on herself. Uh, so thus staying alive long enough to land actually the hexes that cannot be resisted. So maybe that's the use case for her. Uh, actually, I want to try that with you guys uh, really quickly. So there we go again, 40 to 50K or so. Obviously going to be weaker against uh, Drockle, against the Spirit Affinity. But what I want to do is try her one battle before we hop into a dungeon here against a more uh, defensive team or with a defensive team and just see if we can find like kind of a better use case for her in that regard. Uh, so... Let's go into, well, let's refresh and try to find a pretty good team to go against here. Actually, this team's really good. Uh, let's build kind of a defensive team around her. Uh, well, not Lydia. Let's go with just like a super pay to win defensive team uh, like this and put Chris in there too and just see what she can do. I mean, I'm going to put it on auto and just see kind of the, 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 uh, the AI here and how it works. So super slow, finally it comes around to her. She's gonna lead off with the, she still hasn't gone, got lapped by, okay, she does lead, no, no. She, okay, she did, I was wrong, I guess. I guess she did come in with her A3 on auto first, my bad on that. Uh, 
but she's never going to be able to apply. She finally gets one hex up, but her A2 is already off cooldown. So what does it matter, you know? Hmm. So here's her A1 again, I guess. That's her A1 again. But the cool thing, I guess, is that she keeps refreshing her A3, which grants an extra turn, which pushes the cooldown of the A2 down more. So that's interesting. Let's go ahead and try her out in a dungeon here, guys. Uh, and you guys can tell me what you think. Uh, let's go Fire Knight. It is a good affinity matchup. She has a two hitter on her A1 too. So let's put her on a team, kind of on my main team here for the most part. Uh, I took out Lydia, put in Stag Knight. But again, so she is going to lead off with the Hex Reaper. She leads off with the A2. I wonder why she does that. She doesn't do that in the arena. She leads off with A3. Now she goes into A3. She goes right into her A1. Hmm. I don't know. Either way, the kit, like, it seems on paper like it should be super solid. But then in, in practicality, like, wouldn't you just rather have, like, I don't know, Zargala or something? I mean, different type of champion. But that's the Hex Reaper again. You'd certainly rather have Seer. And here's the worst part about this champion. Not to take a 15-minute crap on this champion. But the worst part is, is against bosses, it's nothing to write home about. Even with the hexes up, you'll see in just a second here. So going in, it's not it's not a fast run. I mean, it's a fast run, don't get me wrong. But like compared to a Seer team, for example, it would be, you know, we'd be almost done with the Fire Knight by now on this squad, this particular uh, team. So let's get that shield down. It's down. Let's start landing those hexes. So we have hex number one. Well, we have the only hex we're going to land. <laughs> and there we go. Into Hex Reaper. 67k. Compared to 504k on Cold Heart. I will end the video. I'm not going to make this video any longer than it needs to be here. Because honestly, just not very impressed with this champion. I really wish that hex acted like Bad Elves passive. Where anybody who had a hex debuff got 10 or 20% more damage on every hit. So it actually applied to everybody on your team, not just the AOE attack of uh, Thea the Tomb Angel. So at the end of the day, she put out a decent amount of damage, but really, was she that effective overall? I would say not really. She's an okay and average nuker in this game. Again, I would love to see, since there's only one champion with Hex anyway, I would love to see that apply to all of the attackers, and then it would make her much more valuable, especially against like clan boss and other areas of the game. So guys, let me know what you think of this champion. Am I too low on her? I I'll be blunt with me, guys. I know you already are anyway in the comments below, but let me know what you think of this champion. Have you unlocked her? If you do, if you did, what do you think? Are you one of those who ranked her a two or a three in the reviews uh, or do you actually see some some pro some promise some potential in this champion that i have overlooked guys let me know in the comments below and as always take care guys